Thank you. Okay. Yes, fly. Okay. And silence, everybody. Away. Go. Welcome. You're listening to the best of investing on News Talk 910. This is the show where we present valuable information about real estate, the financial markets, and other economic business of the day. And for those of you listening for the first time, because we have a lot of new listeners, here's our format. A few guys sitting around a bar having drinks without the drinks, talking business with you, the audience, listening in. I'm your host, Edward Brown, and I'm pleased to have as my co-host, Mark Hahn of Pacific Private Money, California's fastest growing private lender, and Robert Chip of RPM Mortgage. Our phone number is 888 888- 912-1190. Now write that number down, 888-912-1190, because you're going to use that number to answer the trivia questions for three vacations given away during each commercial break. That's right, we're giving away nine vacations during this show. The vacations are sponsored by Lighthouse Resort and Marina, located about one hour northeast of San Francisco. The vacations are free. They're only request a $75 cleaning fee to cover housekeeping expenses. Check them out on their website, lighthouseforfun.com. You can also call them at 916-777-5511. And today's trivia theme da, 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 is classic understatements in the movies. You guys will understand when I get into the question. And our website is bestofinvesting.com. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube by typing Best of Investing Radio Show. And go ahead and hit the what, like on Facebook. Is that what people are supposed to do? Right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah like us on yeah, Like us on Facebook, that's what they say. It's something like that. Something like that, okay. And we're also on television, Comcast, Channel 26 on Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 6 p.m. Now, today's special guest is Karen Simpkins-Hankins, who's going to discuss turning the tables on your local bank. Hopefully our local bankers are not listening. And Karen, welcome to the Best of Investing. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Good, okay. Here, so here's a couple of quick questions for you here. What are the four biggest mortgage mistakes that consumers make? Well, um, over my 37-year history as a mortgage broker, I found that consumers consistently really make four big mistakes. One is shopping for an interest rate or shopping for a loan by interest rate alone. Okay. Two, not asking if a loan has a prepayment penalty. Wow, I, you know, because I would think on... Uh, Personal residences, do they even have prepayment penalties anymore? Uh, well, some, 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 some do. Some some do. Some some do. do. Okay. Not like it used to, but still some do. Some do. Okay. Go ahead. And uh, taking the one size fits all loan. Okay. By that I mean a, a 30 year fixed rate when there might be a lot of other products that would be better for them. Letting that fear factor get involved. And then number four is doing nothing because they think they don't qualify. Oh. Well, Karen, you're here with uh, three money guys, so we're you know we're actually uh, you know both hard money and, and conventional mortgage, and uh, and so we're uh, you know we're we're all kind of in the same uh, vein here. We provide capital to consumers and investors for different reasons, but um, um, you got an interesting uh, inside some insider tips on on how to get the best interest rate. Uh, how do you, how, as a as a borrower, how do you go about doing that? Well, I think that so much of the time that Consumers, you know, they'll, they'll go down to their local bank without really shopping. They, they think they're just supposed to go down to wherever they have their checking account, and they will um, ask them, you know, what, what, what is your 30-year fixed rate or your home loan instead of really doing a little bit of research and seeing what rates actually are. And I, um, so much of the time, it's a little misleading for consumers because everyone tells you that you just check out the 10-year treasury when the 30-year bond along with a 25-day moving average is usually a better indicator of what rates we're doing. And what I always did is I followed the rates on an hourly basis primarily. And uh, there was a lot of times where I had live pricing that I could catch a deal for somebody if I knew that there was a specific economic report coming out, like the Consumer Price Index or the Fed's Fed rate was going to change or the Fed minutes were going to be published. A lot of those have a huge impact on what rates are going to be doing. So it's important that people have a little bit of understanding how interest rates change and that the mortgage person that they're working with understands that and is not just looking at a rate sheet. So do you have a suggestion as to whether people are better off working with like an independent mortgage loan originator uh, versus walking into your bank? Well, I'm a big advocate of, be, of working with a mortgage broker or at least a mortgage company that provides broker services because it just gives the consumer more options. You know, I had 50 or 60 different sources 
of money, there was a lot of uh, lenders that I had that were my favorites, that it gave people the ability to do a one-stop shop kind of a thing and also allow me to custom fit the loan to their particular situation. Karen, I think you have to let the audience know that you're not a subsidiary of RPM, which is my company. <laughs> everything you're saying is exactly what we are. We're a mortgage bank. We also broker to most of the other places. But uh, when someone comes to you, what, what do you suggest? What kind of questions, uh, important questions, should they ask the lender? Well, I have nine critical questions in my new book, Need Mortgage Info Now. Those nine critical questions talk about how you can um, interview a lender. I mean, we're all led to believe that, that the consumer is in control of the lender, when in actuality, they're in the driver's seat if they know the right questions to ask. And so, um, I, I usually recommend that, number one, they ask if they have what their pre-approval process is like. Do they actually do a full credit approval, or is it just a crunch a few numbers and do a pre-qualify letter because that can cause problems down the road if you do not have a good loan officer. Um, I ask them, have them ask them if they have a credit approval letter and if it is an actual credit approval letter, again, not the pre-qualify letter, and that will they custom fit that credit approval letter to the particular offer that the, the consumer wants to make. I was a huge advocate of actually custom fitting my approval letters to the particular offer that the consumer wanted you know, on the house that they wanted to offer because it protects their bargaining power with the seller. And if the seller, let's say for example, that they qualify for a $300,000 house but they want to uh, make an offer on one at two sixty five. If the seller knows they qualify for three hundred, it kind of gives away their bargaining power. But if I custom fit the letter two sixty five or whatever it is they wanted to offer, even if I had to issue it two or three different times, then it's just more consumer friendly. And they qualify for one hundred and eighty seven months of loan. I'm just kidding. Pardon me? <laughs> they, they qualify for not a thirty year mortgage, but one hundred and eighty seven months, no more, no yeah. less. They qualify for the first ten payments only. Yeah. <laughs> You can buy a tent with that one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now I, I know a lot of listeners out there are going to be asking, how do I eliminate junk fees and reduce closing costs? How do you do well, that? That's one of the things that I, I like okay. people to look at, too. Is, I mean, with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and all the changes they're making to the good faith estimates, it's becoming harder and harder for the consumer to shop. And so, again, I go through in my um, program and let them know what typical closing costs are and let them understand that, that if you have title insurance and you have escrow and, and every lender that you shop are going to utilize those same services. So there shouldn't be much difference in escrow fees or title insurance fees. Except for, um, when, well, let me ask you a question. If you refinance within, was it six months, the, the, usually the ALTA policy or the LDA policy, uh -huh. it, you automatically get a break on that? Is right. that automatic or is that you have to ask for the uh, escrow company? Well, I, I found that it's important to ask because a lot of times it, it doesn't happen automatically. Yeah, so, I, don't, I don't think I'll yeah. significantly break it. Yeah. I, I always recommend that they ask and then I also let them know what fees, in my opinion, are junk fees like doc prep fees and wire fees and processing fees and that not every lender charges them and so that it's important to compare apples to apples. Yeah, I thought every lender did charge those fees. Interesting. No, they, they, they have different amounts and different names for fees. Yeah. <laughs> How's a sense. poor mortgage well, broker to make a living? Yeah. Exactly. That's not totally true because I didn't charge any of them. Yeah, but that's not the broker, it's the lender. So, so when you say that you don't charge any of them, are you actually the person that procures the loan or do you then send them to a bank or a broker? I was, I was brokering, but I've seen not only the uh, lender charging those fees, but I've also seen the brokers charging those fees as well, so they're getting a double hit. I, I had to ask Robert off air what procure means, because again, I only had six years in high school. Okay, uh, we are going to cut to our first commercial break, and uh, before we do that, Karen is going to be kind enough to give one book away to the first caller who calls 888-912-1190 and says, Please give me her book. And what's the name of the book? 
Need mortgage info now. Need mortgage info now. So go ahead and um, call 888-912-1190 and ask for the book. First person uh, who calls in and asks for the book gets it. Okay, we're going to cut to our first commercial break, and here is the trivia question. Again, the theme is classic understatements in the movies. Okay, in Ghostbusters, Bill Murray says, well, there's something you don't see every day. What was he referring to? The first three callers with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Call 888-912-1190 to answer this question. In Ghostbusters, Bill Murray says, well, there's something you don't see every day. What was he referring to? 888-912-1190. Make sure to include your name, your email address, and speak slowly and spell out your information for us. And also, before we cut to the break, we um, have another special trivia contest where the winner is going to receive a two-night stay at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel in San Francisco with breathtaking views of the city. Um, at one of the city's best restaurants called Brasier S&T, Mandarin Oriental San Francisco aims to delight with the perfect blend of California charisma and Oriental charm. The hotel has completed a full renovation. Centrally located, Mer Mer Mandarin Oriental is within walking distance of Fisherman's Wharf, Union Square, Chinatown, and the Ferry Building. Mandarin's Orient Mandarin Oriental's elegant rooms and suites Boast of fabulous amenities, complemented by incredible views of the city, the bay, or San Francisco's iconic suspension bri bridges. Our new spa offers a range of luxury treatments. MandarinOriental.com slash San Francisco. And here's the contest question. Ten years ago, this was not in the top ten, but now it is about what couples fight about. What is it? And... Uh, go ahead, here are the rules. you got to uh, email Ed, uh, edward at bestofinvesting.com. Uh, so you don't do any phone calls for this one. It's edward at bestofinvesting.com. Uh, cannot have been a previous winner of any contest on the Best of Investing, and we need to get your answer by midnight tonight, and we'll announce it, uh, the winner, pretty soon. And we will be right back. So I couldn't hear her at the very end when she announced her book. I didn't hear it through my headphones. I just want to double check and make sure she's going through the system. Um, I am here. Yes, you're here? Okay, okay, good. All right. Okay, you're still there? Yep, okay, 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 all right. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> I don't think I know the answer to that, Ghostbusters. I remember him saying that, but I don't know what if was her like name? What was her name? Ghost Exploding was, uh, or something. Who's her? The, the woman's daughter. Oh, in Ghostbusters? Yeah. yeah. Was it Sigourney Weaver? Yes. Weaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not the question, but uh, yeah, the, the answer is yeah, yeah Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So well, she didn't yeah. like. I remember anything. you opened the door to her apartment and we saw all blown out. She was there with the siren. Yeah. Like, would you wait a minute? Let me first slide. So keep in mind when you're asking her a question, she can't hear you by talking in your ear. Yeah, you got to be really loud. She is, that's why. That's why whenever we do this, I'm turning my mic and talking. Yeah, that it way. still catches them. Because yeah. you earlier you were like you were, you're in your voice actually you're. Kind of we gotta get talking you. Really, really, really loud. You need to announce. <laughs> <laughs> yell, Robert, yell. <laughs> okay, just get set up for the second segment here. Yeah, I got cut off before I got to say that you get to ask him what kind of commission you want to make. Oh, okay. Well, we'll that's yeah, mission on what? <laughs> for the loan officer, what kind of commission they want to make? Yeah, so, is that one of your recommended questions to always ask? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I don't see we'll, why not. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get we'll get into that. Okay. I mean, I know there's a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, uh, I attended a. Uh, even though I'm not a conventional lender, I attended a boot camp uh, one year, um, and uh, you know they they were of the mindset if you weren't making even in this new environment if you weren't making one and a half to two points uh, per loan you know just walk away they weren't in, into the whole discounting fees uh, type of thing. So. But if you broker loans the commission is set. You don't have a choice. Really? Huh. Okay. I didn't know well, that. You, you, I mean, that's not true either. I mean, you can stipulate with the lender what fee you want to make, and then you, you have a contract with them to do well, that. Well, I think what, okay, Karen, hold on to that thought, because I want to get that on the air. Okay. okay. We, we like arguing a little bit. That's just a little <laughs> bit. It makes for good radio. Okay, guys okay. ready? I'm ready. All right, hold on a second here. Um, and no, I don't know the answer to the trivia questions. Okay. Does anyone know the answer? I thought it was when she, uh, when he opened the door to Sigourney Weaver's apartment and saw her. I could see that. 
Oh, well, oh, oh, the prior well, here, you can, you can add, you can add that one. Okay, ready? Okay, here, my own here. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with my famous co-host and the best private money lender people know is Mark Hahn of Pacific Private Money wow. and Robert Chip of RPM Mortgage. All right, and uh, we have in the studio here Karen, uh, who's going to get back to us in just a second, but we have to uh, ask the, answer the question that we asked when we cut to the first commercial break. In Ghostbusters, Bill Murray says, well, there's something you don't see every day. What was he referring to? Uh, I thought that might be when he uh, looked in the apartment of Sigourney Weaver and the apartment was blown away and she was there in her siren outfit. That is not correct. The answer is the giant Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Oh, yes. Remember that? <laughs> oh, <that's right>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are in the studio here with Karen. Karen, what is your full name? Karen Simpson Hankin. There we go. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, Karen, when we cut to a uh, break, you were uh, going to mention something about the commissions. Well, just one of the nine critical questions that I talk about is to, I always recommend people to ask the loan officer they're going to be working with um, if they work on commission, and if so, what kind of commission oh. do they want to make? Okay. Well, that's, that's actually a good idea. And I, I, I think, you know, a lot of people, I know, uh, I've certainly felt this way. It's, it's almost kind of like an you're afraid to ask that question like it's like it's none of your business or something but mm -hmm. in fact uh, so you recommend so so how much money do you want to make on this one John <laughs> as much as I can well, and I usually recommend that one to one and a half percent is pretty typical for the industry okay. well, well my, my understanding is when, as I said before when you get who work in areas where the housing prices are much less uh, might have to, uh, to make money. They might have to set a higher percentage that they make on a loan if their average loan is going to be fifty or $60,000. But they're right. stuck with that higher percentage. Even if they wanted to do a million dollar loan, they would have to charge that same percentage. Right. And that's true with the, with the Frank Dodd stuff that came out in the last year and a half or so that they have refined that. And, and that was, that was good to protect this consumer because I was seeing with a lot of the specialty products in the heyday with the pick a payment plans and that kind of thing, people making 4 and 5% on one transaction. <laughs> that sounds like hard money. Yeah, really. I can't, yeah, I know. I can't harder. Harder. That, was a, that was a conforming $200,000 loan. Wow, wow. So, wow. so Karen, really, what? how should people negotiate to get the best mortgage terms in this new market? Well, I think a lot, of course, you know, it's pretty credit score driven, but I think that the key to all of it is just be educated, to know what your options are, to work on your credit history and, and your overall financial uh, profile so that, that you do have some bargaining power when you go in. And then it's shop, shop, shop. Make sure that, that you're comparing apples to apples and that every single item on the good faith estimate as well as the amount of commission that the loan officer is going to make or the amount of loan origination fee that the lender is charging is, is disclosed to you in its entirety. Well, you're a tough cookie. I'd hate to be the lender with you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's the way to be, and that's uh, what the legislation is trying to make. So, that's so the, true. Uh, in fact, part of the Dodd-Frank regulations are now when you go to a broker or a bank and they give you a good faith estimate, if at the end, in closing, the fees are greater. Oh, we made a mistake, or oh, we don't charge that. We charge this now. They're not allowed to increase the amount from the original. Good that, faith that's estimate. only right. On, uh, is that and only I agree with that. I used to, for 25 years, I had a guarantee on my good faith estimate when I quoted somebody. Resident. 
I would be within a hundred bucks on my actual closing cost when I went to closing or I would pay the difference. And 99.9% .9 of the time, unless I accidentally made a mistake, I was within 50 bucks. And so it was incredible uh, marketing tools for me. It never cost me anything because I was always accurate. Wow. And, and, and as Edward mentioned, uh, he, he asked, I mean, that's, that's not uh, so prevalent in commercial lending. It's not even applicable in commercial lending. Right. right. And Commercially residential. residential mm -hmm. one to four units. And when, uh, when people are looking for a place to buy, I mean, I have some clients, oh, I'm looking on my own. I don't want to deal with the realtor. Or what's your thoughts about that? Well, I always recommend dealing with a realtor. I'm a big advocate of that, primarily because uh, they're going to know more about the neighborhood, whether the neighborhood is improving or deteriorating. They're going to be able to give a consumer advice about what's going on with zoning, if there's the potential for a new freeway coming in that might affect the saleability down the road. So I always highly recommend using a realtor as well as they just are really helpful in the negotiation process. And, you know, the average real estate contract these days are like 10 pages long and then you have about 15 more addendums that go along with it. And and also help they help with uh, getting the home inspection done so that it help with any kind of repairs or negotiating on um, items that come up with a with a loan application. Hey Karen, there was uh, you mentioned something about credit scores before, and I wanted to find out um, what uh, what are, what do you see as good to a way to improve your credit score. Well, you know, I'm a big advocate of doing a lot of the work yourself and staying away from credit repair companies and rapid rescore kind of thing. And that, that um, to understand credit policy and understand what promotes good credit, you know, by making your payments on time and limiting the amount of charge cards that you have and knowing that, that if the balance on your charge card is above 50% of the credit limit, that that's going to have a ding on your credit score. So just understanding the credit process going out once a year and getting a annual free credit report, which they're entitled to, and know that if the information that's on their credit report is being reported correctly or if they need to do some cleaning up. Because what I saw happen is they go out and they, they get pre-approved pre and they go out and they are pre-qualified in, in most cases. They go out, they find their dream home, they make an offer, they get accepted, they get into the whole um, loan process and their credit report is actually pulled. And then something shows up that they didn't know was there, and they've got to get it fixed within a 30-day closing, and everybody's panic-stricken. Yeah, you know, I find it kind of interesting. A lot of people don't know that you can get a free credit report, you know, once a, once a year, and if there's what fraud, then you can get even more than that. But a lot of people don't know that, and they go to some of these websites, and they have to pay for their credit report. Right. I've always heard, too, that, uh, that a great way that a lot of people don't know about to increase your credit score significantly is always make sure you're carrying no more than a 30% balance on your credit cards based on your credit limit. Right. That is if true. you get over 50% of the, the, of the balance on your on the limit, it, it's like a 35 or 40 point thing to your credit score. Personally, I found that hard to do. It's like, you know, you know okay, you got a credit card with the $5,000 or $7,500 limit. It's just, it's really easy to carry a balance that's about 50 to you know 50 percent ish, but it's really like that 30 percent is a kind of a magic well, number. Wait, I got a question for you: You're carrying it from one month to the next, or just well, when they pull your credit? It. No, well, using it is one thing. Well, because remember, you could have a situation where you know, like I pay my credit card every single month off, but I might get more than uh, you know 60 percent. I think I think you're month. absolutely right. So right, if you use it's carrying a balance from it, one month to the next. One month to the next. Oh, okay. But, 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 but whenever, it, no, when, when they pull your credit, if it's, you if you have a ten thousand dollar limit, and you pay it off every month. When they pull your credit, it's going to show a balance. It's going to show a minimum payment. And if you happen to have bought something and it's high, the then end. then then my suggestion to people is to you know, redo it and you pay it down to less than thirty percent. Yeah, that's but, a good idea. But, but at least when uh, uh, my company, when we pull a credit report, the first page says, here's your credit score, and here's how much your credit score could increase. Look at the next pages for some suggestions. Oh, that's good. That's really good. That's, that's really good. Karen, um, thank you so much uh, for Karen Simpkins-Hankins uh, joining us in the studio here. 
and um, appreciate you giving away a book to one of our lucky listeners, too. Thank you. Do you have a website, Karen? And my website is www.needmoredeepinfo.com. And I also have a radio show on Web Talk Radio called Surviving the Credit Crisis. Great. Well, thank, thanks again for joining us in the studio here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye okay. We are going to go to our second commercial break, and here is a trivia question, and it goes like this. What was the name of the movie in which Tom Hanks says, Houston, we have a problem? The first three callers with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website, again, is Lighthouse <laughs> Their website, again, is lighthouseforfun.com. A little technical difficulties there today. Um, call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. What was the name of the movie in which Tom Hanks says, Houston, we have a problem? Again, call 888-912-1190. Make sure to include your name, your email address, and speak slowly and give us your information one letter at a time. And we'll be right back. Boy, today's just been... Wow. Yeah! <laughs> we need Ghostbusters for that. I, you know I think it's all Ghostbusters' fault. It is, yeah. Ouch. Ouch. I hope I can hear it okay. There we go. You hear what's piercing. Yeah. That's wow. grounds for the divorce if you're married to <laughs> something like that. Well, yeah. Sometimes the phone connections are better than others. Yeah, so. but it's a good thing my connection is right here. Yeah, than mine. And then it depends on how loud I am. She was projecting to both of us. Yes, she yes, was. She was. <laughs> That's okay. You don't like that. Earth. I'm a little scared uh, to hear how this sounds ahead of time. What do you think? What did you say? Yeah, yeah. I am. Who what? Right. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, and home with my famous co host. Famous. The best kind of money lender in the world. And the infamous. Yeah. 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 Robert Cook. RPM Mortgage. You can call me, the private lender. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I feel comfortable recommending to my investors loans that are secured by property in California. So uh, we do also lend in Southern California as well. I, I have uh, familiarity and I've got people in my office who are very familiar with uh, Southern California regions. But for the most part, my personal experience in real estate for 30 years has been in Northern California, and that's generally where we stay. So and I always recommend when people call me, and, and I do get calls from all over the country because, you know, you know thanks to the internet, thanks to Google searches, I get people calling, and I think today, in fact, I, I do have a call from a guy in, in West Virginia. It's like, I, I just tell him, you know, Google search West Virginia hard money, or, or Georgia hard money, or Chicago hard money, or wherever you're calling from, because your best bet, if you're looking for, you know, alternative or unconventional financing, because your bank is telling you no, um, your best bet is always to try to find uh, a resource that's local to you. I have found that those people who say, those companies that advertise, we lend nationally, well, maybe they do, but if they're far away from you, they're going to charge you fees, and, and it's just, it's going to be expensive. There, there's no free lunch. There. Or are they just going to broker it out to somebody Well, else? that might be, too. They either yeah. broke it out to someone local to you, or they'll charge you to fly out, look at the property, or just, I mean, they have to do their due diligence. So yeah. it's, uh, so there's, again, um, you know, I always recommend work with somebody local. Yeah, well, I remember seeing sometimes there were six brokers involved, and each one said that they wanted a point. Well, the deal never got done. Well, because right. So no one's going to pay six points on it. Referral after referral. Yeah, exactly. Right. You're better getting into local yeah. banks. So you're so you're in another state, and you call somebody in you know in Southern California, who then calls somebody back in your state, and so it's a you know, there's been. In fact, it's funny because I've gotten calls from brokers on the coast saying I got a client who owns property in San Francisco. Really? Yeah. How did you get the call? Well, they found me on the internet. Yeah, the, no, I, yeah. we were actually yeah. when we were doing hard money, we had the same thing. Yeah, we, we the exact same sort of thing. I mean, it was great because we ended up doing a good loan. But um, yeah, it was kind of funny how it came yeah, from one one thing to the other. Uh, so, uh, Mark, give your, your information. You sure. Can. You know, if if uh, if you're uh, a real estate investor out there and you're looking for additional resources to help you. Uh, buy fix and flip property, to finance property, or maybe even you're looking for 100% uh, financing because we've got some programs that fit that uh, that too as well. You can find us at pacificprivatemoney.com. That's pacificprivatemoney.com or call our uh, office at 415-883-2150. Now, Mark, I'm sure a lot of people, and uh, me included, when you say that we have uh, programs that we do 100% financing with hard money, that's at least an anomaly, not what most people are used to. Could you explain that? It is an anomaly, and, and generally, the way we do 100% financing in this new market, it's not one loan that basically provides all the financing. It's generally a one-two combination, a first and a second. And the first would be at what would be normal private money rates, which might be anywhere from, say, uh, 10 to 11% on average, and maybe three to four points in cost for a, say, 70% of the purchase price. But then the remainder of the capital is going to come from a number of lenders that uh, exist in the Bay Area here that are, have a business model of where they lend in second position. Now, their money is more expensive, and oftentimes they want to participate in the profit. So if you're looking to buy, fix, and flip, they come in uh, almost, well, they, they, they come in this, very similar to an equity partner. And so they are going to share in the profits in some manner. And uh, these lenders, I've, I've got about 20 of them in my database and they all have slightly different uh, um, you know, uh, 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 pricing strategies but we've been doing a number of deals recently where um, the borrower the, the, the rehabber has only had to come in with maybe ten to twenty thousand dollars on say a two or two hundred fifty thousand dollar you know all-in cost for a project and that would that would include your purchase price your rehab money your holding costs so it's it's pretty novel, and it doesn't work in every situation. You got to be able to make sure you're buying the property correctly. So it's great. It's great for your clients good. because, for it the is most good. part, no, yeah, yeah, because you have effectively a, another guarantor, even though it's not right. personally guaranteed. It's a relatively new product. A year ago, we didn't have this. Uh, in some circles, they call it a SAM loan, and SAM is S A M, and that stands for Shared Appreciation Mortgage. So again, it's uh, it's it is a hundred percent financing, but it's a first and second combination, and it's great for people trying to get back into real estate or get into real estate for the first time, or if you don't have a, a strong track record and, and 
what we think of the break in, which is a lot of reasons why uh, it's worth it. So, right. yeah, so there's a lot, probably a lot of uh, people that were carpenters or they yeah, would buy exactly. a house themselves and yeah. sell and trade it, and they've been out of business, don't have the capital to do that. Or maybe the credit for right. or, or the know, credit score or whatever. I've actually gotten a call from a number of contractors who uh, who investigated this, and uh, we've done some deals like this, just like this for second now, do you, do you contractors. Do you refer that second out, or, or they've already come with someone who has the second? I, I'm position. typically getting the phone call from the borrower who needs high percentage financing, and then uh, based on the, the particulars of the, of the of the applicant where the property is, I'll pick up the phone and call okay. one or more secondary lenders okay. and ask them if this you, is a good deal. Okay, the first mortgage, what LTV are you doing? About seventy percent of the purchase price. Wow, that's and so that's the high, so okay. the second would come in with the. Remaining down payment, the thirty percent plus closing costs and money for rehab, and even possibly money for the holding period costs, like the interest during so, the six so months. So it's sort of like a private construction loan where they want to make sure that there's enough money on the table to complete the project exactly. and that's, carry everything. What, what kind of rates are they? Are, is the second getting the charges? Well, the, the, it's not so much the rates because it might be three point two twelve percent for that second. It's how much of the back end participation do they want us? You know, anywhere from twenty five to fifty percent share of the profits. So okay. Pretty and, and is, yeah. is there a contractual assumption that it's going to be put back on the market and sold within a certain period? Generally, of time? yes. Yeah. They don't want to collect fifty percent of the rents for the next three years. That's correct. It's yeah. usually only in a buy, fix, and flip situation. Yeah, that, that kind of like contractor and, and, have a very sharp pencil. Do you still see as many of those as there have been? Is that market tightening up with the, the lack of inventory or? Well, it, it is getting harder with prices going up. So again, you really have to um, be good at making offers that allow you to acquire a property at a good price. There has to be enough of a profit in the uh, potential profit in the project for it to make sense. Taking time, I mean, it, it, things always take more time. Right. You know, yeah. Right. Is it a ninety-day flip? Is it a six-month flip? You know. I wonder how many of those second mortgage holders are going to end up owning the property. Well, some will. I mean, it, look at it. It's, it, it's, it's uh, not a perfect market. So the, the good news is that it's an opportunity and it's another product out there for people who are looking to get back into real estate. In your experience, are a lot of the places that the, the purchases happen, are they uh, just regular listings or do they tend more to be foreclosed properties or bank owned properties or short sales? We're finding that the best acquisitions in today's market are via short sales. If it's on the MLS, you're probably going to have to pay more than you'd want to pay based on what you think it will sell after the but aren't short sales sales that are listed on the monthly listing service? Um, not all. I thought the banks wouldn't uh, accept less than the amount owed unless they sell it as offered on the open market, so they can keep their price. I, I'm still getting applications from people who are in a short sale situation that was not in the public market. So there are people out there that are you know, door knocking on people in pre foreclosure. Well, okay. Uh, now we're going to cut to a break because we took a little bit of time. And we're going when we come I back. The whole set. That's okay. That, that's probably <laughs> interesting stuff. Um, and because uh, audience, you're going to want to. We got you going. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Audience, you're going to want to stay with us because the email that we received from Robert is very worthwhile for the audience to listen to. So here is the third trivia question: In what movie does the sportscaster say "just a bit outside"? The first three callers with the correct answer. One of my favorite movies. The one of the the first three callers with the correct answer are going to win a free three days United States Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse4fun.com. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. In what movie does the sportscaster say just a bit outside? Make sure to include your name and your email address, and remember to speak slowly and spell out your information for us one letter at a time. And we'll be right back. Theme song was Wild Thing. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Give me my face back. <laughs> <laughs> We're on television, Mark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's how I'm going to open up the program. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just the regular song, right? <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that was an overtime segment. Wow. It's okay. When I'm. Uh, Two out of three. Not good. Uh, I think they're on the process. <laughs> I think they're on, right. 
There's no crying in baseball. Yeah, yeah that's, that's crying. Crying. That's what I should do. <laughs> There's no crying in baseball. Uh, who was too crying? Much time was it Madonna? Was Either it, one. Uh, no, it was, it was some unknown. Oh, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, was he, it wasn't Rosie O'Donnell. It wasn't uh, any of those. Some it was one of those stars. It wasn't one of those stars. It wasn't one of those stars. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should have a fight. Like Farm Girls. Yeah. Gina Davis looked good in that. Gina, that's the name I was trying to remember. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so maybe she's looking a little. Well, she's looking her age. Yeah. Women aren't supposed to age like that. I was uh, watching on TV and they had the Johnny Carson stuff and he was kind of doing the Academy Awards and said, gee, it's so interesting to be up here and see all these new faces out there on all these old faces. <laughs> yeah. Bad, bad. Yeah. So this is Uh, was there any um, other tidbits? I mean, I've, well, I, 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 I brought, but it's you know, it's it's kind of more of the same. It's just it's it's a, a well, Sean O'Toole Sean uh, wrote his yeah. predictions for 2013. It's, it's all the same stuff we've been talking about. That you know, there, no, there won't be a second you know, second wave of foreclosures. Oh. We're we're been there, done that. It's it's, there might be it's a all over. He says there's there's you know at the end of the blog he says and no there will be there will not be a wave of foreclosures. But it talks about it's it's too it's it's longer than we have. We can save okay. it for another time. Okay. Yeah. And I'm getting that it's just a little bit after. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. After Robert and you get into that, yeah. thing, that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Welcome back to the best of investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hoff of Pacific Private Money and Robert Chitlam, our PM Mortgage. When we catch up the third commercial break, we ask the trivia question: In what movie does the sportscaster say "just a bit outside"? Mark. Major League. Major League. That is Pitch correct. Fire. Remember wow. Bob, Bob Huker, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Baseball. Okay, Robert, we got an email here for you. And audience, listen to this one. I have heard some of these advertisers say on the air, uh, you know, various radio stations, that they can offer great rates to people after they have refinanced just a short time ago. I've heard those commercials too. Yeah, me too. Are they real? Well, uh, yes, they're real. You refinanced and you have a loan that doesn't have a prepayment penalty, which is close to 100% of the loans don't have a prepayment penalty. There's some banks that, uh, if you have a 30-year fixed mortgage, you almost certainly don't have a prepayment penalty, and um, you probably would never bind into it. So if you don't, uh, you have a new loan, and if uh, something happened and you figure that you can get a new uh, a loan and worthwhile and save money, then you can proceed immediately and get another loan. And how many of your clients uh, have come to you, either new clients or old ones, who have refinanced fairly recently and then asked you to refinance again? Um, there was only one call this morning. Because <laughs> oh I've heard those commercials where they say, if you're paying higher than 399 yeah. give us a call. And it's like, are you kidding me? Wow. Yes, but, but in refinances, normally at the rate we're talking about, you have some closing costs. Sure. Although you can get loans where the bank will give you a slightly higher interest rate and then they'll absorb your closing costs. It's called a no-cost loan and it's a little bit of a misnomer. It's no cost, but you're paying a higher percentage rate than you would be if you paid the cost on your own. Are we going to be getting into those loans again where people can't afford them? Um, well, uh, <laughs> not unless they go to Mark and even if, yeah. <laughs> and even Mark, no, they, Mark they, have to, they have, so. to, quali they have yeah. to qualify oh, sure. stringently. Yeah. Uh, once in a while, I get emails from people that say, well, we have a, a no-income qualifier, but um, I'm not sure how they do that to anybody I know that goes to a loan, even if it's a hard money loan. They, lot, they, have, they have to be able to prove that they have the ability to repay that yeah. loan, or else, even in a hard money loan, they could uh, have problems with trying to collect the money from that loan. Now, going back to what we were just talking about a moment ago, that I've heard uh, advertisers say that, you know, even if 
that's higher than a certain rate like 399, you can refi at no cost to you as opposed to what's been called you know, buying down your rate, which is actually where you say, well, I'll pay the closing costs from your loan, but I'll get, I'll get my four and a quarter will now be three and three, three quarters. Well, like the, the reality is anytime you do a loan, the people handling the loan are going to have some costs. Right. They're going to get. They're going to go to a title company. The title company is going to charge. The title company is going to give them some fee. And those, those, the, those costs amount to well over two thousand dollars. Usually close to three thousand dollars. Anytime you get a loan, the bank will say, "We'll give you this interest rate, and it'll cost you three thousand dollars." Or we can give you a slightly higher interest rate, depending on how much the loan is. And the bank will absorb those costs, or you can pay more money and get an even lower interest rate. And that's a a, a, a dance of figuring that yeah. I like to go through with all my clients and say. Then it gets involved. How long are you going to stay in the house? You can stay in the house for for six months, and then you know your kids are graduating, they're moving to college, and you're going to go to the East Coast. Then you or one year. And the rate's going to drop some more in yeah, six months. Yeah, well, you're, if you're not going to stay there a long time, it's better to get a loan where the banks will absorb the costs. If you're going to stay there a long time, it's better to probably you know, get a lower interest rate and absorb the costs. You don't have to pay them out of pocket usually. You can add them to the loan. Or as Karen says, negotiate with them and do both. Uh, yeah, I don't, both. Know, I don't know about negotiating with uh, banks. They have that stipulation where they can slide up and down. They have a formula for how much they're going to make. That's more in financial planning, really. It depends sure. on what your plans are, what your situation is. Okay, so Robert, if the, you know, the audience listening and they hear about buying down the rate, and they think, you know, they're trying to refinance, they're trying to try to figure out which way is the best way to go, you'll help them with that analysis. So, how do people get a hold of you? They can always uh, call me on my cell phone, which is attached to my hip. It's 415 515 1941. Or they can check out RPM's website rpm-mtg.com slash our ship, the Robert ship. Okay. So we don't have too much time left, but I wanted to just touch on something really quickly here. The French are fleeing a proposed, a proposed tax hike, not a, the proposed tax hikes is leading hundreds of wealthy French to consider leaving the country and putting their homes on the market. Because apparently they're thinking about a 75% tax rate oh, on God. salaries higher than 1.3 million which is up from less than 50%. So can you imagine that it's say 48%, they want to go up to that's, 75%. That, the French are fleeing. The that, French that's are fleeing. close to what it was when Eisenhower was fleeing. Well, yeah, you know what? There was a time when uh, it was about 90%. Tax rates were at 90%. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, if you got above a certain amount of personal service corporation. And uh, some aren't waiting for the new tax to pass. Uh, they just assume they are. They're blaming their departure on uh, what they call the government's anti business mentality. That kind of sounds a little like California. A little doesn't? familiar. Yeah, yeah. That's, now they could, they could easily flee to uh, Monte Carlo or San Marino. That's that's probably where they're going. Okay, thoughts for the day. When you're looking at someone you love, your pupils dilate. dilate. They do the same when you look at someone you hate. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. How do you tell the difference? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> and more than 10 people, like this one I couldn't believe, more than 10 people a year are killed by vending machines. <laughs> Now, not by the candy that's in the machines, but by the machines themselves. So I'd like to see a video of that sometime. What happens? You, you know, you, you pretend to put a quarter in, and the machine goes, no, we need a real quarter, and it kills you. I don't know. I don't know. I guess they fall on top of them. It's like yeah, building a machine yeah. or something. I don't know how that happens. Now, tune in in a couple of weeks, because we're going to be off next week because Cal basketball. So root for the Bears. And tune in in a couple of weeks to the best of investing. We're going to be giving away nine more free vacations for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown. We're wishing you the best of investing. So long. Indeed. Right. Uh.